one thing that God has done in your life. Amen? Amen? Why don't you just go before God and just thank him for that one thing that you know he has done in your life this year. Just go before God and thank him for that one thing that he has done. unasema kama si mungu kama mungu angekucha enye tungeumia ningeumia Father we thank you we know there is more than one we know there is more than two. We know there is more than three. You have done many great things in our lives. My Lord, we celebrate you. We celebrate you, Lord, for what you have done in our lives. We celebrate you. We celebrate you, my Redeemer. We honor you and we bless you. Father, we thank you for the worship. We thank you for the praise. We thank you, Lord, for the instrumentalist. We thank you, O oh God, for your presence in this place. As we get ready to hear your word, we pray that your Holy Spirit will anoint the preacher of today so that people will be anointed in a powerful way and be ministered in a powerful way and their lives will change. We honor you and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Come on, let's give it up for Jesus once more. Amen. And amen. And amen. 
Manze worship team, Asanteni Sana. Mr. Chairman, please help me bring the pulpit here, together with Pastor Kevo. Now, um, I want you guys to thank you very much, men of God. Asanteni Sana. Nataka mnidu yefewa moja. Before I invite the man of God, nataka mnachekizi space ziku hapa mbele. Nataka tu songe songe mbele kidogo. If you don't mind. The guys who are at the back. Uh, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's what, even this side. Nice. Kidogo tu, akaliche, songe mbele tina tu kidogo. <laughs> kidogo tu, at least, yeah. Yeah, thank you guys, thank you. Yeah, I want to welcome you to our youth service. Buana Asivire. Tell your neighbor, Pastor Jomba is confident about our youth service. Tell your neighbor again, Pastor Jomba is confident about our youth service. When I was in Bible school, we were told that the church will find it and you leave it. <laughs> Kanisa utaipata na utaiacha. And there are many other people who came before us, great men and the women of God. Some of them are not here with us. They have already gone to be with the Lord. And they left us a legacy, a legacy that we can, we can run with. So, ikanisa aitawai anguka na aitawai isha. Buana asifiwe. Whether the devil likes it or not. And as far as our youth, service, our youth service is concerned, I'm telling you, we are going to greater heights. Amen? Amen. The pandemic may have come and it to affect Apa Napale, but we don't serve coronavirus. Buana Sifue, Sisi tuna serving Nani, tuna serve God. Na Bible inasema, everything in this world will come and go, but the word of God will remain forever. So nothing can stop the word of God. I want us to just invite the preacher, and the preacher of today is none other than one of our pastor, a man of God that I respect, someone who is going very far, someone who is deep in the revelation of the word of God, and someone who I said will go international. Amen? Let's give it up for Pastor Kevin as he comes to minister the word of God. Karibu sana, Pasi. Amen. Buenas For those who do not know me, I'm Kelvin Masharia, and most of all, I'm born again. Hey, leo ma cameraman watakuwa na kazi. Sana. Amen. If you have your Bible, I normally encourage us to carry our Bibles. If you have it on your phone, the better. Amen. Let me just uh, arrange my notes here. Uh, uh, the book of Ruth, Ruth chapter 1. And as we do that, I normally give respect to the reading of God's word. So as we do that, I request us to stand up as we read God's word this morning. The book of Ruth, chapter 1, from verse 12 to 22. Uh -huh. Let me just put that. That's good. Ruth, chapter 1, Ruth, chapter 1, from verse 12 to 22. The Bible says, Turn back, my daughters. Go, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope... If I should have a husband tonight and should also bear sons, verse 13, would you wait for them till they were grown? Would you restrain yourself from having husbands? No, my daughters, for it grieves me very much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. This is Naomi speaking. Verse 14, it says, Then they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Orpa, Orpa, not Oprah, Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth 
clung to her. Verse 15. And she said, Look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. Look at verse 16 carefully. But Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God my God. Where you will die, I will die. And there I will be buried. The Lord do so to me and more also, if anything but death parts you and me. And verse 18, that's where we get our theme today. It says, when she saw that she was determined to go with her, with her, she stopped speaking to her. And verse 19, it says, now the two of them went until they came to Bethlehem. And it happened when they had come to Bethlehem that all the city was excited because of them. And the women said, is this Naomi? But she said to them, do not call me Naomi, call me Mara. For the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. Verse 21, I went out full and the Lord has brought me home again empty. Why do you call me Naomi? Since the Lord has testified against me and the Almighty has afflicted me. So Naomi returned and Ruth the Moabites, her daughter-in-law, with her who returned from the country of Moab. Now they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of Bale harvest. And, go, and all God's people say, you may have your seats. So that's the main reading of the book of Ruth. And uh, <laughs> Mavo, Mavo, I told you this would happen. No, uh, Revelation Zitapotea. We, I was sharing this with Mavo yesterday and we, we we're just deliberating on the book of Ruth. Now, the book of Ruth occurred in the times of Judges. Now, the book of Judges is referred as the book of failure. We did Judges last year where the children of Israel kept on praying to God for a deliverer to come. And God sent them Samson. God sent them Deborah. God sent them Elud. God sent them Gideon. And still, they did not turn away from their sin. Now, the book of Ruth occurred in the era of judges, in the era of failure. In the era where people served God with their mouth, not with their hearts. Now, Ruth was not a Jew. She was not a Jew. She was a Moabite. And to top it all up, she was a descendant of Lot. Remember the story when Lot came out from Sodom and Gomorrah? Peter Ukonaia phones, eh? He had incest with his daughters. And so Moab was born out of that lineage. And Ruth here was a Moabite. Praise the Lord. She was a Moabite. And by the fact that she was a Moabite, she was married into the family of Naomi. Naomi was a Jew. Her husband was called Elimelech. But now there are two things that occurred in Naomi's life. One thing is that her husband died. And number two, her two sons died. One of the husbands who was called Mahalon was the husband to Ruth, also died. Now ladies, I, I pray that you may listen to me today. This is, this is a message that you have to listen. Buona sifiwe. And also for the men, men we need to also listen. The book of Ruth, how, how can God integrate a Gentile in the Old Testament and to top it all up, she was a woman? Praise the Lord. And so when, when, when Ruth was told by Naomi, because Naomi, number one, her husband died, her two sons died, chaos had happened, so she had to go back to Bethlehem. She came from the tribe of Ephraim. She had to go back to Bethlehem. And when she was going back, she told her daughters-in-law, you know what? You have to go back to Moab. You have to go back to the culture that you are serving. You have to go back to the demons that you used to pray to. I call them demons because they call them gods. And so Ruth was being told by Naomi, you have an opportunity here to go back. Orpah. The Bible says she kissed her mother-in-law 
and she went back. Ruth did not. Bwana sifiwe. Ruth did not go back to her culture. Ruth did not go back to her way of worship. She didn't go back. Now, guess what the revelation behind it. Ruth did not only understand the basis of living and cleaving by the fact that she was married to that family, but also Ruth understood the essence of living the ways of darkness and being cleaved to the ways of light. If you look at your Bible very carefully, look at verse 16. Verse 16, it says this, And treat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. And guess what? And your God shall be my God. Praise the Lord. Your people shall be my people. The Israelites shall be my people. And your God shall be my God. My theme to you is the power of determination. The power of determination. Because in verse 18 it says, When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined. Oh my goodness. What is determination? Determination is the process of establishing something exactly by calculation or research. Let me repeat it. Determination is the process of establishing something exactly by calculation or research. So Ruth had an opportunity here. She had calculated that the people of Israel, the people of Naomi shall be my people. The God of Naomi shall be my God. But you see, there was a problem here. Naomi was bitter. She was bitter. Why? Her husband was dead. Her two sons are dead. Her two sons are dead. Guess what? For those who have read the Bible very carefully, I think it's in Romans and 1 Corinthians 7, where it says that when a woman is married, she is bound by law, the law of her husband. Praise the Lord. William, are you hearing me? <laughs> you, you are bound by the law of your spouse. But by the fact that the spouse was dead, she was free from that law to be married to somebody else. But you see, she, she cleaved to Naomi. She cleaved to, to Naomi. She clung to Naomi. Actually, that's what the scripture says. She was free to be married to somebody else. But you know what? She decided, I will follow Naomi. Now, guess what? The book of Ruth is not necessarily Ruth gets to shine. But the book of Ruth is about a young lady being mentored by an elderly lady. Buenas if you. How many of us have ever sat down with Pastor Tembo and actually asked for advice? Hands up. How many of us have ever literally even bought coffee for Pastor Elvis? How many of us wame decide unajua mina juanga jomba metoka western, west side, tumunulie kuku kumu appreciate? And you have literally sat down and asked for advice. Paul wrote in the book of Titus a pastoral epistle to Titus saying, let the younger women learn from the elderly women how to respect each other, how to respect their spouses, how to raise their children. Ruth understood that even before the book of Titus was written. Why? She was determined. Point number one, determination gives di direction. Determination gives direction. How? If you look at verse 18, it says, when she saw that she was determined to go with her. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, my goodness, she did not speak to her. Naomi alikuwa nona Ruth na enjoy. Right now, I'm at that age where in Fikamali, you look at the biological clock. And I'm like, <laughs> yo, unajua kuna venye perona kuangalia hivi. Kuna venye hii line jitendelea ama inaisha na wewe. Unona. I decided personally not to be at the feet of people who got married recently. 
I decided to personally, let me sit down to a person who has been married for 57 years. <laughs> na nikakachini, na kanyambia, marriage is not what you think. Ati, marriage is combined by having a house, a car. Yes, those, those are necessities. But when I listen to her story, yani iyo, iyo marriage yaki mechomwa na jua for 57 years. My goodness, ata jubilee ilipita. Ruth was married, but she did not understand the ways of the Israelites. So who gave her the advice of how Boaz would come into the picture? Naomi. Ruth alikama kamambia manze ni menda kwa shamba. When they came back to Bethlehem, Ruth alikama kamambia ni menda kwa shamba. Na kuna jama na nifinya finya kamacho hivi, ka sweet 16 kana nifinya macho. Kutenda aje hapa hivi. When she came to Naomi, then akambia Naomi, no, kuna jama na itua Boaz. Naomi akakumbuka, that's one of the relatives of her family. Then Naomi akambia Ruth, this is what you will do. Remember that Naomi was a bitter woman, but God was going to use her bitterness to become better. You see, at times, God will allow things in your life to fail. How will you know success? How will you know success? Come on, Jay, grind. But most of us, we think that because our path has to be straight, our path has to be okay, then God is with me. Look at this scripture in the book of Ruth, verse 20, where Ruth says, but she said to them, do not call me Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. If you have read the book of Ruth, that was not that God had dealt bitterly with her. No. It's life. It's life. Life is made up of ups and downs. Situations will fail in your life that your heart will become bitter towards God. And you will see that God is the source of your pain. But he's about to turn your pain into praise. Praise the Lord. Point number two. Emotions tend to deceive. Emotions tend to deceive. Verse 20. She said that the Almighty had dealt bitterly with her. That was not true. Maybe it was, but we do not know. When, when you go through life, when you go through the ups and downs and you become bitter and angry with God, you have to be determined to stick with God. Ruth was still determined to follow her mother-in-law despite of her being free from the law of her husband. She was free to be married to somebody else, but she decided to follow her mother-in-law. My goodness, a citizen. She decided to follow her mother-in-law, Naomi, because she knew if I stick with this woman, somehow, some way, God at Apenya. Now, guess what? Naomi did not know that the breakthrough of her life, the reputation of her family would be restored by this lady. Amen, Peter. If you have your Bible, turn to the book of Matthew 26, 37. Matthew 26. We'll come back to Ruth. We still have time. Matthew 26. Matthew is in which page? Matthew 26, 37. It says, and he took... And he took, this is Jesus, and he took with Peter the two sons of Zebedee and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Verse 38, then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. Look at verse 39. He went a little further and fell on his, fa on, on his face and prayed saying, oh father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Uh-huh. Verse 40, then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't know my intercessor. And he said, what, could you not watch with me one hour? Wait, 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 wait. Nani one hour prayer? 
Yani Christ mbaka liko meka standard. Yani could you not watch over me you, just one hour in prayer? Because you see, in the presence of God, time loses value. Time loses value. But Christ ana kama na the disciples, could you not pray with me one hour? That is Peter, James, and John. But guess what? Look at verse 41. Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. 42. Again, a second time, he went away and prayed, saying, Oh, Father, if this cup cannot pass from me unless I drink it, you will be done. Look at verse 37. It says, And he took with them, he took with him the two sons of Zebedee and Peter, and he began to be sorrowful. We see for the first time the humanity of Jesus. Why? Because in a few hours, the Romans are coming. Not the, not the Romans, but the temple guards of Herod. And the death that he was going to die was not a gunshot, was not going to be hacked by a panga. No. It was crucifixion. And Jesus understood the process of crucifixion because in the ancient world, crucifixion was a gruesome death. The Romans would nail you on the cross and they will never remove your body from there. They will wait it until it rots. And so Jesus here, we see the humanity of Jesus that he was very sorrowful. But one thing about his prayer is that he said, not my will, but your will, O Father. What does that mean? I am determined to do your will, O God. I am determined. How many of us are determined, regardless of having eight weeks in 2020, you can still prosper despite of COVID being here? How many of us want to elevate from one level to another in your devotion with God? Because let me tell you, when I've told you, emotions tend to deceive as point number two. Point number three is this. Your devotion will keep your emotions. Because in prayer is when you will have a clear mind of what God is up to. It's only in the presence of God where God will give you the strength to hold on unto him. Because let me tell you, they that wait upon the living God, he shall renew their strength. He will renew their strength. Watcha ni kuambie usoi patia mungu kalenda. Ati God lazima come through na masayangu. My friend, utakula maindi. I'm telling you, God is never boxed in your time. He told Abraham, I'm going to judge a certain nation. Genesis 15, he told him, I'm going to judge a certain nation and your descendants, I will deliver them. It took them 400 years. 400 years were pendwa. That's the calendar of God. Ruth was determined to follow this bitter woman, to follow this bitter old lady, so-called mother-in-law. She was determined, but little did she know that she was in the plan of God. Look at the power of a woman when a woman is submitted to the right thing. You see, there is no harm doing the right thing, but there is more harm doing the wrong thing. Atiyeme <laughs> Peter. There is no harm doing the right thing, but there is more harm doing the wrong thing. Ruth Ali decided, decide to a combo scooter. There are two things that can never let you down in your life. Your two legs. She would have walked out. She chose not to. Why? Because she was determined to take care of this old lady. She was determined to take care of this old lady. And let me tell you, when Boaz came into the picture, what was the CV that Ruth had? To Ruditena kwa Ruth. Ruth, 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 Ruth. Let's go back to Ruth. There's a CV she had. And ladies, this is for you. Verse 11, chapter 2, verse 11. Actually, chapter 3, verse 11, sorry. Ruth, chapter 3, verse 11. And for those who have Gideon Bibles, Poleni. Aina <laughs> Ruth. Ruth, chapter 3, verse 11. These are the words of Boaz. Check this out. And now, my daughter, 
do not fear. This is Boaz speaking to Ruth. And now my daughter, do not fear. I will do for I will do for you all that you request. Alikuwa memuitisha wheat. For all the people of the town know that you are what? So many of us. For all the people of the town know that you are what? Oh my goodness. Bwana sifiwe. Church, are we in church? What did Boaz say? For all the people know that you are what? There's a version it says honorable. The King James it says what? A virtuous woman. Now a virtuous woman does not necessarily mean that she's a housewife. No. A virtuous woman is a woman who is a CEO but respects her man. Ruth was hard working but she respected Boaz. And the CV that Ruth had in all the town of Bethlehem is that she was a virtuous woman. Now that is the power of determination when you do the right thing. There is no harm, I will repeat this, there is no harm when you do the right thing. But there is more harm when you do the wrong thing. Sivi ile Ruth alikuwa nayo bwana asifiwe Sivi ile Ruth alikuwa nayo in Bethlehem is that she was known to be virtuous she was hard working she was determined I'm learning so much from this lady by the name of Ruth because she chose to submit to her mother-in-law How many of us whether your mother is there or not You can sit down with your parents and tell them how did you guys meet? They tell you about life. Yes, things have changed, culture has changed. But God hasn't. Point number 3, which is the second last point. Ah. We said what determination gives direction. Emotions tend to deceive. Devotion keeps your emotion Oh my goodness. Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3 it says what? He will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. For you to be in peace you have to be determined to be in God. Una get? For you to be in peace you have to be determined to be in God. That's what Isaiah says. You will keep him God will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. So it is your responsibility to keep your mind in the presence of God so that you will be able to receive the peace that you're looking for you have to be determined to seek the face of God you have to be determined to read the scripture you have to be determined to study the word of God right now the media is telling us that there's a second wave second wave ilians a kitambo When COVID came, people lost their jobs. Spouses were killing each other here and there. What will go on a cheesy? And all that, God alikubali. Mbaka waswa kase ma Billy Gates and Yosiju Antichrist. Na kumbi watu wa YouTube wame kosa kazi. I'm telling you. They, 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 they put all manner of sorts and I'm like, where is the church? And God is like, you're looking for the church and you are the church. If Ruth was determined to follow Naomi, I urge you, be determined to follow Jesus. I urge you, be determined to follow Jesus because without Jesus, you cannot do anything. John 15 verse 5, he said what? I am the vine, you're the branches. Abide in me and I will abide in you and you will bear much fruit. And without me you cannot do anything. That's what Jesus said, John 15 verse 5. But you see, for you to produce fruit, you have to abide in Christ. Because it is the root that determines the fruit. If you don't abide in Christ, then you are unproductive. So for you to produce fruit as the branch in the vine, you have to abide in Christ and Christ has to abide in you for you to produce And for you to abide in Christ you have to do what you have to be determined. Wokovu si raisi. 
You have to be determined to be in Christ. You have to be determined wholeheartedly. Jesus did not choose 12 men because they had nothing to do. He chose 12 men because he believed that they were determined to change the world. Yes, Peter denounced the Lord. Yes, the very night that Jesus was betrayed, everybody left. But do you know there was a disciple who was with him throughout? BFF. I got this. Do you know there was a disciple who watched everything that happened that night? When Jesus was falsely accused, that disciple was there. When Jesus was nailed on the cross in pain and his blood was coming out, he was in pain and death was kicking in, that disciple was there. And what did Jesus do? Jesus entrusted his mother Mary to that disciple. He said, woman, behold your son, John. Mina kuambia life itakam na wasa wata kutoka. Wasa wata kutoka mtu wangu. But let me tell you, a true friend will stick. Ata kama ni uo moja. Unajuanga mabeshti uwanga sa zile mfuko zako zimefura. Sa zile umeketi umekrosi migu because wallet imejado. Lakini sa zile maanze kemwe kemwe ata huna. Wataenda. Wataenda. I have seen it with my own eyes. I have witnessed it with my own eyes. That there will always be that one friend. Not two, not three. The last point is this. Doing the right thing requires determination. Doing the right thing requires determination. When Boaz came into the picture of Ruth, now listen to me very carefully. When Boaz came into the picture of Ruth, akanza kumkatia, akanza kumgema mstari, akanza kumpatia maua, ama ni wita likuwa na mpatia, because ni wita likuwa aga. So, anampatia mamstari atakani dina eh twende 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 but you see let me tell you some of your book carefully it is not boaz who made the move it was who it was not even ruth it was naomi <laughs> cuz ni naomi ndo ali advise you them why i have more experience this is how it works you see in as much as experience is the best teacher information is power and so Naomi aliambia Ruth, even though tafanya A, B, C, D, and E. And when Boaz came into the picture, they got married. But before they, they got married, there was a closer relative than Boaz. And in those days, for that relative to inherit back the land of Naomi, he had to marry Ruth and take back Naomi and the land. So Boaz alienda kwa umse man to man, haka mambi umeno kiudem. Umeangalia venye mother, mother in law wake ako, ako, ako mbele. Uo relative akamwambia unajua nini mimi nataka tu hiyo shamba peke yake. Akamwambia it can't happen. You have to take all of them. Ako na hawezi. And so because he could not Boaz had to set up a meeting with with the elders at the gate. Ndio uo msee aseme before witnesses that siwezi chukua Ruth, siwezi chukua Naomi, siwezi chukua hiyo land. Wewe Boaz kwa unataka unataka hiyo land chukua. And so they agreed before the elders. And in those days in their culture when you have agreed they did not have contracts to sign. You remove your sandal and you exchange. So wanna <laughs> imagine kama Clemoni size 10, mini size 6. Jipange to make exchange na tumekuwa na covenant and it has been agreed not here on, on earth but in heaven and so Boaz was excited got married to Ruth and they conceived a child did you know this is the revelation behind it did you know or do you not know that even when Ruth got that son with Boaz she did not even have the revelation of what name she would give the son neither did Naomi It is the women of Bethlehem that named the child. 
and they called that child Obed. Obed became the father of Jesse. And Jesse became the father of David, the man after God's heart. And eventually David, in his lineage, the king of all kings, came in that lineage. Look at the power of determination. Ruth did not know that she was in the plan. So Mama Matthew 1, she did not know that she was in the plan. Things will fail in your life, but the plan of God over your life will never fail. They are crumbling down, but you have no idea why. You have no idea why are they failing. The best person who can answer that is God, not even me, not even our pastors. No, pastors, they don't know everything. We admit it. Ruth was so much determined to follow this lady. She didn't know by following this lady, she would be the great grandmother of David. Oh my goodness. She ended up being the great grandmother of David. My goodness. The power of determination. If you're determined this morning, make a choice to follow Jesus. If you're determined this morning, if there's a, if there's a path in your life that unafil kuna mali ni liacha God, wacha ni kuambie God akuhepangi, wendo unahepanga God. Are you hearing me? Let me borrow five minutes of our time. When, 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 when sin comes in your life or when you indulge in sin, God never departs. It's you who departs. Isaiah 51 verse 2. It is your iniquity that has separated me. You get it? How many of us are determined to change the world? How many of us are determined to change the community that they live in? How many of us are determined to be the believers that we are supposed to be? Because it's no longer about entertainment. If you are an artist, you have to sing the songs that God gives you through his word. It's no longer entertainment. God will raise people here. God will raise people here in this sanctuary. But it's up to you to be determined to follow God and calculate the cost. Because Peter ali calculate. Ali kama ali 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 tole a Christ kifua minda kudaiya. Ali ambayo ngoja yo jogo iwike iwike utajua meni toka. But when the Holy Spirit came upon that man, oh my goodness! In one sermon, three thousand. Me at 100 bado, at a 50. 3,000 got saved. Look at how the church expanded because one man was determined. Paul was determined. The question is, are you determined? Yes, things will fail. They will. We live in a fallen world. We don't live in a perfect world. We live in a fallen world where people make mistakes. We live in a fallen world where people do not keep agreements. We live in a fallen world where people look at God as a myth. We live in a world where people say that God does not exist. We live in a world where people get married because of fashion. Buona sifiwe. Umeingia leo kwa ndoa and three weeks umemtoka. Eh, ma Hollywood tunafuatanga instead of the holy word ile tunafuakufuata. Kumbe kipya maisha humu ni tamu sina hamu na utamu hazidumu humu duniani yani nina amani naamini na imani yunami na muamini na mdhamini kuliko za duniani zote madini zisizo na thamani sitachoka kumsifu Sita choka kumsifu mchana na usiku Sina shauku ata kimo maitaji yangu Kima vazi, kima lazi Kama nilishe hata ndege wa angani Hawajui hangani Au
I, 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 I wanna make you famous, that's why you formed us Make me holy as your holy, not to us but to your glory I praise the Lord, I worship you no matter what I'm going through No matter what they say to me, I'm grateful, yeah Talk about you in every line for you, I put my life on the line To live for you is necessary, praise you in the sanctuary You're faithful, you're merciful, he died for me, he's graceful Is it in me, I'm truthful, I'm praiseful, yeah Praising every single day, on your name I will go hard In you Christ a man ashamed, praising you is what I love You know the way, the truth and the life, you know the light You wait to deny, my God's in the way, me been a dying to keep on away Still in the fire I my hands up to give you praise Even when I'm weary I give you praise What a wonderful feeling It's a wonderful feeling God I lift my hands up to give you praise Even when I'm weary I give you praise Said I wake up in the morning with praises and rejoicing. Call this a new day, man. I call it a new dawn. Ha, living in the spirit, yeah. Eyes wide open, yeah, yeah. I can't stop sharing what the Lord has been doing. Uh, you don't have to like it, but you gonna respect it. You better take it or leave it. Now don't you catch up or feelings? You better grab what you can take. I'm grabbing Christ, oh, that's my take. Yeah, He gives me some energy. He loves me. That's our chemistry. Say even on my worst day, with God I feel great. Even when in great pain. With God I celebrate For nothing can separate us from the love of God Jesus That's why I'ma give him yeah, yeah. all praise So give me the mic then get out the way I wanna make Satan feel so insane I'm calling you out cause you're on my way Thank God I have God got something to say This is what we do in praising Jesus To the foolish, to Tadani, to Najizi Holy Spirit you condone Lord, I lift my hands up to give you praise Even when I'm weary I give you praise wonderful feeling It's a wonderful feeling Sacrifice of praise, but kill a kid too. When a cat is a hot day, oh, and in you I live, I move, and I'm a big nila ishi, ili, nikutu kuze, milele, na milele. Me. Jesus my savior, my redeemer, I worship him daily Even when people around me think I'm going crazy I praise him every day, any day He's amazing, I praise, I worship, I follow I live in peace, no sorrow Jesus in my life, I got strength to face tomorrow When I wake up in the morning, I just have to do it some more Hey, I lift my hands up to give you praise Even when I'm weary, I give you praise wonderful thing I give you praise, even when I'm weary, I give you praise, it's a wonderful feeling, it's a wonderful feeling.